Hey, Em, thank you so much for your question. You want to know if you were to invest $10,000 for 10 years into the S&P 500, which is the top and the largest 500 companies in the US, how much money would you have after 10 years? So we're going to go through this example together. So I'm on National Bank Direct Brokerage. We are on my online brokerage account. Um, it's another free alternative to Wealthsimple, which I, which I quite enjoy. Um, and we're going to go down here and it actually shows us the average annualized return for the last 10 years annually was 14.62 percent this is a little bit high over the last 100 years it's around nine percent um so i just want to show this is currently what we're working with but if you want to be conservative and use a number like eight or nine you know we can kind of play with that too this is dividends reinvested so we're going to go over here Calculator Soup, one of my favorite websites, Future Value Calculator. That means that we are predicting the future value of our money based on these different parameters that we're going to enter in. So present value, we are starting with $10,000 and number of periods, 10 periods, 10 years, same thing. Rate per period. Now let's just go with the last 10 years, 14.62 compounding one time per period. Additional payments, we're gonna do none because you didn't ask about that. You just wanna see 10,000, 10 years. All right, let's go. So $10,000 after 10 years would be worth $39,000 with $29,000 being in growth from your investment. Now let's go and just do a bit more of a conservative number. Let's go ahead with eight. We're gonna calculate that and you would have 21 and a half thousand. Um, so essentially able to double your money. Um, now, I think that $10,000 is a reasonable amount to start with, but you definitely should be adding over time. And so the tax-free savings account contribution limit for 2023 is $6,500. If you divide that by 52 weeks in a year, that gives you $125 and we're gonna be investing that 52 times per year, right? And we're gonna go ahead and calculate that. So if we were to have $10,000 to start off with and then invest $125 a week, we would have $119,000 with $44,000 being in growth of our investment and $65,000 is what we've actually put aside and invested ourselves. Um, now, if we increase this to something like 20 years, compound interest does its magic and we'd have $355,000. So as you can see, investing is not magic or rocket science. It's really just about um, numbers and calculations. And the biggest thing that people don't do is they don't save, they don't invest, they don't put that money aside. Um, $125 a week, I don't know how that fits in with your budget, if that's realistic or not, but whether you can or you can't, you'll always be right. The fact of the matter is that if you're able to find $125 in your budget a week, or if you're able to work more hours or get an additional you know, part-time job or whatever it might be, I mean, um, Dave Ramsey says he can deliver pizzas, um, but if you're able to find that $125 per week, this is what the future holds. And it's just a matter of whoever does this will see this um, in the future. I'm an example of this. Um, I'm not speaking out of turn here. So please um, review your budgets, review this calculator on Calculator Soup. I think I'm gonna make some more videos because um, I've been getting a lot of requests about doing these actually. Um, it's not hard to do, but it's just about Finding the money, that's the hard part, is really finding the money to actually invest. Um, a lot of people are only investing, you know, I mean, a lot of people are investing 0% of their income, but some are doing five or 10%, which is a start. But the higher percent that you're able to invest, the quicker you'll reach your financial goals. Um, a staggering statistic, only 40% of Canadians have a tax-free savings account. So if you have a tax-free savings account, congratulations, you're in that 40%. Of that group, only 9.5% contributed the maximum amount uh, from last data that the Canadian Revenue Agency reported. 9.5% contributed the maximum amount they're able to. 
Um, and when we factor that into our total population of Canada, that's only 3.7% of people that actually max out their TFSA. So if you've maxed out your TFSA in 2023, um, although this data is a few years old, um, but if you maxed out your TFSA, you are in the 3.7% of Canadians that have maxed out their TFSA, so congratulations. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and uh, please follow, like, check out the link on my website. I have a guide how to get started investing if this is all foreign to you, but you want to get started. And uh, thank you again, M, for the question.